Last weekend, Daytona Beach hosted this year's official Strongman Games. We contended with hurricanes. We contended with 400 athletes, with seven events condensed into two days. Lynn Morehouse and the team at Official Strongman, you guys do an incredible job. Auntie Liz and myself really enjoyed the weekend, and we're here to tell you guys all about what happened. I am just about recovered from the jet lag. I haven't. <laughs> you haven't recovered, you've just not even slept. No. You decided you're gonna get your hair done before you even I know. worry about this video. <laughs> I forgot I had it booked. <laughs> but it's not about my hair. It's, it's about not the about your hair. That's games. indeed correct. What a weekend of strongman and strongwoman action. Amazing. How like so just a very quick lowdown on those that don't know. It was quite well publicized, but there was a hurricane slash tropical storm. I think when it hit us, it was officially a hurricane. Um, so the island was closed at certain points. People's travel plans had to change. We had to hunker down. Yeah. There was all sorts of drama that meant that essentially the three day competition had to be condensed into two days. Like I say, this is nearly 400 athletes doing seven events. There were so many ways that they tried to make it work. They were like, do we drop events? Do we, the, do we not make the final separate and just have everyone flow through and like get rid of some events? But in the end, they decided to make some small adjustments to some of the events, such as less distance on the farmers and only one weight rather than a medley of farmers and cutting down the time limit on some of the events as well. And yeah, removing a and that's, you know, it's tough on athletes because they'll have kind of practiced certain strategies, but mm. to be a good strong man or strong woman, you need to be adaptable. Absolutely. And that's one thing, you know, we saw this weekend, the, the, the athletes that competed really, quite honestly, blew my mind with how high the standard was across every single category yeah i mean I'm so impressed last year was our first year at this competition and i was impressed then but this year it was like osg on crack do you know what i mean <laughs> it was absolutely crazy so we're going to do a quick rundown of each class starting with the under 64 kilo ladies this class was just incredible i mean last year's champion shannon smith came ninth in the final yeah. now Shannon may not have been at her best, but the standard was incredibly high. Kira Rickson's deadlift and Viking press. Rihanna Lovelace, she mm. is quite incredible. Obviously, I'm lucky enough I get to do the commentating for these athletes, and I get to watch a lot of them, and I've obviously seen Rihanna, you know, many, many times now. Every time I see what she does, it kind of blows my mind. To think that, you know, I know what it takes to be a very strong man and to see the weights that she can lift. And mm. so consistently, you know, she, she didn't train to come here and win the deadlift. No. She came to win the competition and she really dominated this class. What's really impressive about Rhiannon as well is that she's not just there for herself. She's a coach. Yeah. Her and Luke have a load of athletes yeah, there. Yeah. And when maybe she should be so focusing on herself, she stood at the sidelines cheering her girls on. It's, you know. Yeah, she's got a real team kind of camaraderie with um, the chaos athletes. She's got team spirit. Yeah, she has indeed. But what an athlete. And she is our winner this year. You know, I think losing out to Shannon last year has lit a fire under her. She's been totally dominant this year in everything that she's done. And she is now the under 64 kilo world champion. So Kira Rickson came second in this class. She is only four foot 11, I think she said. She said if it was- But she's a tank. She's an absolute <laughs> I tank. Was, yeah. I was actually like looking at her from behind. Sounds dodgy, I know. But I was actually, <laughs> Sorry, I was actually admiring the, the kind of shoulders and back on her. Yeah. You know, she's got some serious muscle on that body. She's a powerful woman. And Holly McRae from Canada took third place. I was also really impressed with Kate Connolly as well. She came fourth. Kate Connolly, yes. She was yes. very, very good all weekend as well. Very yeah. consistent. I think she just faded a little bit towards the end. Yeah, but she was solid on every single event. I'm friends with um, Kate on Facebook. And she was updating after each event. And she's just so sound. Do you know mm. what I mean? It wasn't, there was no excuses. She was like, don't worry, I'm fine. The others are just better. I love that as well. Yeah. I love to see athletes just take it how you should. You know, you go there, give 100%. If you get beat, you get beat. Use that motivation to go train harder and come back better next time. Don't make excuses, you know. Every single athlete, and I'm talking everyone, has mm -hmm. got a story that they've had to go through to get there. You get into the competition, you do the best you can, and what will be will be. Standout performances in this class, and I would say, first off, Kira's 
Viking press. She did 19 reps. I think the next down was 15. Of course, if you're not going out last, you don't know what you have to do in order to win. So 19 reps, which was a really comfortable win in the end. And then also Rhiannon's sandbag to shoulder. She was the only woman in that class to do the fourth bag. And she did it all so smooth as well. I'm so annoyed because that clip that I have of her, my mic wasn't working. And that's because of? Romark. <laughs> no, no. He did mess with my mic at one point, which I think I fixed. My batteries also died at one point as well, but I have it in a snazzy form with a little bit of music. <laughs> so it's fine. We've still got it. So we move on to the Masters women. The Masters used the same weights, I believe, as the under 64 kilo women. So that's why it was so impressive watching what Rihanna did on that sandbag, knowing none of the athletes could get that fourth bag. But moving on to the Masters, it was another stack class and Mary Colasanto was the dominant force. She really had an incredible first day and kind of stretched out so far that she gave herself a nice cushion going into day two. Last year's champion Aisha Rilla really fought hard and closed the gap towards the end. Mm. You know, she was not giving up that title easily and it's always fun watching Aisha lift. And she gave us some mugs. She did. She we did. We haven't got them right now. The, we haven't unpacked. The, um, yeah. <laughs> we haven't unpacked. But we look forward to a brew from them very, very soon. We do. And Claire Myler really, really impressed me. Her first time going to OSG. She actually ended up being the over 50s champion as well. They didn't actually do an over 50s class. No. But they made the trophies anyway. Yeah. And she was the best over 50 competing. It's incredible to think she's 50. She doesn't look 50. I, I actually, I'm not trying to suck up. I look at a lot of these women, I think there's no way you're a master. Some of the women age better than the men they, in the master. They category. definitely they do. They do, don't they? They, they yeah. do indeed. But yeah, Claire was unbelievable all weekend. She was so disappointed because Stones is her best event. Got to the Stones and her foot got stuck to a lump of tacky. And she could you could see her trying to get that stone up and her foot was just glued to the ground. Yeah, like you said, it was her first time at this competition. Claire, you need to get back to her. She, I know I had a chat with her afterwards. She's like, I don't know if I can do it again. She you have to. You're amazing. Yeah. And I'm sure with another year, you can go there and really challenge for the under 40s title as well. Mm. So just after winning, Mary announced that that would actually be her final competition. She's now retiring. So I felt for Mary, bless her, because she thought she'd messed up so much on the stones that she hadn't won overall. Obviously, she was leading going into that event, but she only placed mid-pack. So she was just very relieved to hear that she'd won and that she'd done enough. And then she announced her retirement, which you can see on our video, and I know you haven't uh, watched it. Not yet, no. <laughs> so we move on to the under 73 kilo women's class. This is a new class. It's only been going for a couple of years now. Yeah. And last year it was won by Erin Murray, who this year decided to step up to the 82 kilo class. So the previous champ wasn't there. I guess the real kind of news from this category was Nancy Johnson. Nancy Johnson was, to be fair, dominating this class she was yeah she was doing incredible let me just quickly see how she did so she did first place on the first event she was third on the second event she was first on the third event she was first on the fourth event and then disaster struck on the car walk she snapped her was it her tibia amphibia tip fib yeah on the car walk yeah Horrible, horrible video. I know you've seen the, the clip. I unfortunately it's... have the clip, which I obviously have not included anywhere yeah, because it's quite um, It is quite graphic. It's not, it's not nice. No. Uh, we kind of wish Nancy the best with recovery. I've been under a huge weight and crumbled to the floor before. It's quite a devastating and scary feeling. Very To scary. have that kind of much weight crushing down on you and something go. It is a very scary feeling, but... I'm sure she will be back. She's an incredible athlete and we wish her the absolute best. Absolute warrior as well. So that being said, it was a competitor who came down a class. She competed in the, yeah. she was second, I believe, in the under 82s last year. Hannah Brock from Canada is now a world champion. I've spoken to Hannah and obviously, you know, she's going to be pleased that she's a world champion, but she's still a bit disappointed with her performance and obviously with what happened to Nancy. She's kind of questioning whether she can really call herself a world champion. She absolutely can. Of you can only beat can. who's in front of you. And she, she put in an amazing performance herself. And let's not forget, Hannah was in the accompanying car when that happened to Nancy. It's very, very hard to carry on yeah. when you hear and see something as horrifying as that happen to one of your fellow athletes. Yeah. So she showed a lot of spirit and heart and it was a real 
real roller coaster for Hannah, but she perspired. I hope she ended up getting her chicken and nap in the end. <laughs> <laughs> so in second place in this class, we had Emily Naismith from Australia, and she was particularly impressive on the Viking press with 10 reps, which was second only to Nancy. And in third place was Erin Walklet from the USA, and she was really good on the farmer's walk. I've got a nice video of her uh, winning that event. Great hair too. <laughs> she does have great hair. She has great hair. I told her in the bathroom, I was like, I hope you don't think I'm weird, but I really like your hair. <laughs> they probably all think we're weird. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we move to the under 82, and this is another stacked category. This You've got exciting. potentially the GOAT when it comes to female, strong man, strong woman, uh, Donna Moore, moving down to this weight class. Mm. You've got Nadia Stowers, last year's champion, who is just phenomenal. You've got last year's 73 kilo champion, Erin Murray, moving up. Another amazing athlete. And Ashley Crawford, quiet athlete that no one really talks about. But damn, she's good. Damn, she's strong. I really thought Nadia was going to have her work cut out for her this year. And I thought, man, this, this group is looking stacked this year. I, I hope Nadia will be okay. But she really raised her game this year. I mean, she was great last year, but this year she is she's, a lot stronger. She looks like she's really progressed and progressed yeah. all round. All round, like, in every event. She's kind of known as a great presser. Yeah. But she really was consistent. There wasn't a weak link at all in her performance. Her farmer's walk absolutely blew me away. Yeah. Nadia's such a great athlete and really exciting to watch. And she's another one, you know, she's not, she's just sauntering around to be honest. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Nadia pretty much keeps herself to herself, but she's always very friendly at competition and she's got a great presence about her. Yeah, she does. And Ashley Crawford, who came second. So Nadia was first, Ashley Crawford was second. She was just very solid as well. Yeah. She was just quietly going about her business, picking up points on every single event. Mm. And the GOAT, no one can argue that. She's a three-time world's strongest woman. She could technically compete in the Masters as well. Yeah. Donna Moore coming third at world's strongest woman under 82 kilo class. I know Donna would have wanted to win. She's of a competitor. Course. Let's remember Donna tore a bicep earlier this year. Yeah, just a few months Just ago. the fact that she qualified for this was incredible because she had to like zero prep time you know managed to somehow strap her bicep together and get through <laughs> and she put in a great solid performance as well you know donna moore unbelievable athlete and like i said she could be a master now and she's still yeah. competing against the best in the world so just another couple of honourable mentions in this class. In fourth place was Erin Murray. And like we said, she was last year's under 73. She's just come up to 82. And I think to come fourth in this lineup, she did brilliantly. Absolutely. She's obviously stronger than last year. She, she looks the same as last year, if you ask me. I don't know. But I think considering she's not really had much time to settle into this new weight class and to get that much stronger. I thought she did brilliantly. It'd be interesting to see what she does next year with another year training at that body weight. It was a really stacked class though. I mean, I was super impressed with Emma Jane Smith who made yeah. the top 10, really yeah. good performance for her. Kimberly Dirks, another powerhouse. I need mean, someone as good as Kimberly to come fifth. That's a stacked group of yeah. athletes. And then we move on to the open women who I've been going on about for a long time now. I've been super excited for this comp, super nervous about this comp. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the open women are incredible. I mean, all the women are incredible, but this has just so many fantastic athletes right now. I had two athletes in this group, which, you know, both of them made the final, mm. which was incredible. So Jackie Ochevsky, she performed exceptionally well. She's improved so much on last year. I look forward to another year working with her, see if we can sneak into that top five next year. But Andrea Thompson. Oh, Andrea. <laughs> Andrea, you know, someone I've been working with a long time. She's an extremely good friend to both of us. She's like family. She so makes us want to burst into song. You're, you know, I get nervous watching all my athletes, but Andrea's quite special. You know, she's... I get heart in the mouth <laughs> syndrome watching Andrea. My yeah. goodness. And she's not the easiest to watch. Oh, no. Because she can, we can go through some emotional roller coasters with Andrea. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean I've... I've really had to tell her off before, yeah. like, you know, leading up to competitions. But when she is in the zone, she's an incredible athlete, and I'm super proud of her performance. She came second in the world. Yeah. But she was so dominant on some events. Let's talk about the journey there. So Andrew won the first two events, didn't she? Which was the Viking Press and then the Farmers Walk. I don't think anyone expected her to win the Farmers because you've got Rebecca Roberts in that group who is just known for her phenomenal grip strength. Yeah. Lucy Underdown as well. She Lucy's. absolutely flew and 
looked uncatchable. Lu- Lu- Lucy for me has been so impressive this year. This Watched has been her, brilliant. You know, she's won the British, she's won England's, she's got the deadlift world record, and she's just a lovely person. As well, it, she's just a great personality there as she, well, just a nice is. person to have around. Really nice and fantastic, you know, athlete. The farmer's walk wasn't a great start for Olga. I know it was the second event. She lost quite a few points in this event, as did Rebecca Roberts, and I know Inez would have wanted more from this event as well. So it was the perfect start for Andrea and a bit of a mixed bag with uh, her biggest competition I guess. Yeah well Andrea was very very quick when you compare times to all the weight classes she she really flew down the track and as he said not many people expected that. Olga who ended up winning the competition. Olga is incredible. She's been doing strongman a long time. Mm. She's won the Arnold's a number of times. I think this is her first world title though. Uh, Yeah this is the first time she's won the world's strongest woman. And you know she's we all know what's been going on in Ukraine. To, to think what, just the mentality of these Ukrainian athletes. It's quite mm. quite incredible. And they are fighters. They just dig deep and fight hard to the very end. So we had Annabelle Chapman have to pull out. And there's still maybe at least two athletes I can think of that you could add into that list to make it an even stronger comp, which just shows how stacked the, the women's side of the sport is right now. Yeah. But Olga, unbelievable performance. Other than the farmer, she really didn't put a foot wrong. No. Andrea, winning three events, second in one. The stones and the um, and the sandbag were where she kind of dropped a few points yeah. and ended up. It, you know, that's where. If I was being really critical as a coach, and you know, I'm still super proud of her. It was the sandbag that let her down. She messed up that second sandbag, yeah. and rather than composing herself and going again, she was fighting it she and just wasting energy. Muscle it up. Yeah. These things happen. She'll go away and learn from it. But other than that, she really didn't put a foot wrong. Inez is an incredible athlete. I've been super impressed with Inez for since I saw her last year her, yeah. at OSG, and she is a, a future world champion for sure if she sticks at this sport. Lucy, like I said, I mean, give Lucy another year. Lucy's She's going to be. Too. Yeah, she's, she's gonna be good. an absolute beast yeah um there's just so many great athletes mm. i mean for me the standout performance was andrea's viking press 22 yeah. reps more reps than any other class yeah and she had the most weight out of all the women she is when it comes to shoulder power the strongest woman on the planet she had she won the dumbbell she won the viking press she has the log world record when it comes to shoulder power in competition she proves no she's number it. one so another little upset in this group was Rebecca Roberts, obviously last year's champion, pulling out of the competition, which she pulled out after the car walk, I believe. So uh, Rebecca said she's not had the best prep for this competition and she really wanted to protect her body because she's competing in two weeks' time at the Liverpool show, uh, World's Strongest Nation, which she's not going to want to miss. And we're just going to keep saying this, but another stack class was the under 80 kilo men. Mm. Always good watching these guys, real athletic, powerful as Rauno said, little men. <laughs> Rauno's so funny. He's such a window. He's like, why do they care what they weigh? He said, I was 80 kilos smaller than <laughs> Brian and Thor. I tried to do the voice. <laughs> but, no, I get his kind of... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you get to like a heavyweight and there's big weight There's a massive difference between these but guys. But these yeah. guys do <laughs> incredible things. And it was a stack class. I mean, you know, former champion Tommy Lavelle in fourth place Richard Panganaban from last year's champion coming in second place just so many awesome athletes battling out you know they were close all the way through. Well, last year's champion, Richard, he had a horrible start, really. He he really kind of fumbled on the farmers. He came out a bit too aggressive. Yeah. He panicked. You could see the panic. And then he's just slipping and sliding, just desperately trying to get over the line. I spoke to him afterwards. He said he thought he'd blown it at that moment. But he clawed back every single point that he could. He really and did. he did so well right. to get on the Dean podium. Dean McVie from Scotland Dean was McVie. the other way around. He had an incredible start to the competition. Yeah. And, you know, he was winning, I think, right up until the last event or the last two events. Yeah, yeah. And he he just started to fade a little bit. He lost a couple of points. There was some confusion on the sandbag where he was dazzled by the lights and didn't know if he got a signal or not. Something like that. But Dean is so impressive. Very dense. Like, if you touch him. He's he's got a lot of muscle. He's, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Dense. (laughs) <laughs> compacted. <laughs> but all these guys are. They're kind of. They there's are. not an ounce of fat on them. They've got to be they every shouldn't. pound of that under 80 kilo body needs to be rock solid, and they really do pack a punch. They're they're great, fast, explosive, dynamic athletes. It's Very entertaining, cool. also. They are. They're, so they're kind of like 
You know, there, there's yeah. um, some shouting. interesting characters, <laughs> shall we say, in yeah. the under 80 kilo men's. So Benjamin Donnan from France won this class and he won three events. He was joint first on the axle deadlift. He won the circus dumbbell and he won the car walk. So really steady performance by him, whereas everyone else was up and down a little bit more. So it was his consistency that really paid off in the end. We talk about that so often. We do. And how good is it seeing a French athlete come and dominate? Yeah, top of the podium. And I don't, I don't see that very often in no, strongman. No, I, I tried to do a little interview with him afterwards with his interpreter. <laughs> and one of my questions was, when you entered this competition, did you come here expecting to win? Or like, is this not a surprise, but you know, a really yeah. pleasant, happy surprise maybe. Yeah. And he was like, yep, yep, I expected to win. So yeah, <laughs> good thing go. he did it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well done to Benjamin. Uh, awesome job by Dean McVie getting on the podium. And I want to say well done to Dylan Thompson, who is one of my athletes, and he came six in the under 80. So I'm kind of proud of that because a lot of people say, oh, you know, Big guys are only good at coaching big guys. And I've now coached, you know, big men, small men, bigger women, smaller women. I've coached athletes of all different weight classes to do well in, in big shows and win competitions. I'm very proud of his performance. He did really well. The Masters plus 50s category, the over 50s. And what can you say? I mean, you know, these guys are a pleasure to be around. Lots oh, yeah. of real gentleman in the over 50s uh, Andy Clark from England is a, a solid competitor really good Chad Coy from the States yeah. been around strongman for so long good to see him still taking part in these shows George Pearson from the USA mm. very impressed with what he did but this show I mean really you got to say this in terms of performance this was all about Mark Felix really but was. I cannot continue without talking about the second place finisher nick best mm. nick best is just someone that has done a lot for strongman he's been around many many years i've had countless battles with nick over the years someone that so many of us have looked up to and he announced his retirement didn't he at this competition yeah. and you know he's sort of bring a tear to everyone he's an emotional guy yeah. nick man he cried a lot this he weekend. did he's you know it's he, he he's really one of those athletes that his heart is on his sleeve all the time you, know, you see yeah. that i i was having a chat with him backstage and he was almost giving up at one point like, nick put yourself together and we had yeah. a chat hugged it out and kind of you know tried to give him some motivation well, he went on i'm not saying it's because of me because everyone was chatting to him but yeah. he went on and really did amazing in the last few events he, he kind of pulled did. himself right back into this and, and got onto the podium into second place and an exciting little fact nick because nick is very theatrical like myself actually he took his shoes and he placed them there like hanging them up i've got the shoes <laughs> they're we in have, my suitcase we have nick best shoes he gave them to you <laughs> many worn competition shoes yes. i don't know what to do with them i might donate them to the start <laughs> <laughs> we just want to say you know nick you've been an amazing athlete all through your career someone that myself and all of us have looked up to and you know it's been an honor to compete against you it's been a pain in the ass at times because he is absolutely amazing at certain events Stop, you're getting to the nick, finals in nick on things like a shield carry oh, he can that. just carry a shield for days yeah. his farmers walk and his you know speed events yokes things like that is mm. unbelievable yeah. and you know he's been around for so long to to be in his 50s and still do what he does is just fantastic but a man that just doesn't seem to slow down the man the myth the legend the one and only Mark Felix. To be fair, he dominated this competition. Seven events, he won five of them, and he was second in two of them. Yes. Mark Felix is without question the best strongman on the planet over 50 years old. Yeah. He may be, you know, soon there'll be an over 60s class, and they won't let him do that for a few years, because <laughs> he'll just be too good. He'd be the only one in by then. <laughs> You know, Mark, you expect to win an axle deadlift, but he's winning the pressing events. He's just, just, you can't say enough good things about Mark Felix. No. He, he'd actually won the competition before the Atlas Stones, but he still wanted to go out and put on a really good show. And yeah. he won the Atlas Stones as well. You know, and it's it's why they haven't let Mark do the over 50s for a few years. <laughs> to be fair, the he's over still, 50 class was new last year. It was, was year, and he didn't get to do it last year. He, he did it this year. year. No. They probably won't let him do it next year now. They'll be like, Mark, you're too good. Back into the uh, over 40s. No, because there will be other guys maybe in their late 40s, well, turn 50. True. You don't know these but classes get the best, better. The then. best over 40, I mean, there's a is still three years away from that one i think yeah. there's going to be 
Yeah, but you can't ban someone for winning it once. I'm just, I'm just messing. <laughs> okay. he, I'm just saying he's so dominant in, yeah, in no, that. Yeah. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't feel the fatigue from, you know, for seven events. So I was like, Mark, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. And he was proper chill. <laughs> I'm off was... to SeaWorld. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's just amazing, Mark is. And he dominated this class. The under 90s, another completely stacked group of athletes going into the last event two points separating the top six and the top three were all tied on points that was just absolutely insane actually so amongst that group as well you had last year's champion Nikolai Myers who was hell-bent on getting his second title in a row I hope I haven't forgotten how to say his name but Narimu who was 2019's under 90 champion was also amongst this lineup yeah this was a stacked lineup and a lot of athletes I'll openly admit I didn't know all of these guys but I've been super impressed and just with how competitive it was. The the, the ta- table was just chopping and changing all yeah. the way through. I can't even pick like a standout performance. It was just battle after battle, mm. chopping and changing, different winners of each event. And in the end, Tyler Davis sneaked to the championships. You have to really feel for Dan Benson, who was leading going into the Stones. But like you say, it was a marginal difference. And unfortunately, he ended up in sixth place. It yeah, just... well, I think Tyler Davis, who ended up winning, was in fifth going into the last event. So it was just it all was to all play changed. for. Everyone yeah. was fighting hard. One mistake could cost you. And in the end, Tyler Davis, under 90 kilo world champion. So the under 105s was all about Andrew Clayton. He absolutely dominated. Him and Mark Felix, the two most dominant athletes from the weekend. Mm. Another man that won five events out of seven. I think he was second in one of the others as well. Only one event where he really dropped any points. Huge victory at the end. And, you know, amazing to see this guy back because he's gone through a number of injuries, a serious knee injury that really kind of took him out of action for a long time. He's a former under 105 champion. He went up to the heavyweights for a little while come back down to compete in the under 105s and you can see with these results unbelievable dominating performance so in second place in this class we had dan hughes and in third place was nicholas hine an all-american podium in the yeah under they absolutely dominated from i think eighth place all the way up so obviously we talked about him already but the dominant performances in this class i think both belong to andrew and he did the car walk in under 10 seconds and he was also the only athlete in this class to get the fourth dumbbell his sandbags were really impressive as well i mean his whole performance was he just is an impressive person yeah <laughs> so the over 40s these guys used the same weights as the under 105s um you know this was a great lineup as well you had Not last year's <laughs> defending champion, Zadrina Saviskas. Mm. Liz's best mate, Mr. Rauno Hainler. Yeah. Uh, Rauno, very disappointed. Mm. He, he really wanted to win this competition. And he performed so well. He was another athlete that won a number of events. He won three events. He just had that one weakness. And to be honest, for him, an unusual stone performance. Normally, you'd expect him to lift 180 kilo stone. Absolutely. It's very, very rare. I've seen him fail. That I've seen. I've seen Rano do 220, 230 kilo stones he, before. He just got but, things a bit wrong on the day, and yeah, t- yeah. Tacky was a little bit runny by the time he went there, and he underperformed. Zadrinus, however, very solid throughout, and Zadrinus, you know, didn't underperform. He showed that experience that he has competing. I mean. Both of them have, but Zadrinus just, he's an athlete that somehow pulls it out of the bag when it counts. And that, that's been a champion sometimes. Yeah, I mean, they tied on points in the end, but because Zadrinus beat Rauno on the stones. stones. And of course, it's opened up the whole debate around stones or count back. Like, we're not going to harp on about it here because we actually made a video dedicated to it, yeah. which uh, if I can find it, I will link up here. But yeah, Rauno won three events. Had it been on count back, he would have been the champion. It's is difficult. I mean, I've always been very vocal. I hate the last event rule. Yeah. It stopped Alexi from being second place at Worlds this year. It stopped Alexi from uh, winning the Arnold Schuke last year. No one's been hurt more by it than Alexi, <laughs> we no. should point out. That's true. I mean, Rauno, his big weakness is his grip. He came last on the farmer's walk. Well, he came last once they deducted the points down to... Yes, that's what, that's what I'm it. saying yeah, about yeah. The, the top 10. But other than that, he was... He was really good. Dominant he, he second, won. first, you know, yeah. pretty much in most events. Just underperformed a little bit for him when it came to the stones. Someone that didn't underperform and really impressed me was Jits Kramer from yeah. Netherlands. Very, very strong, great deadlift from him. Yeah. Uh, just 
consistently performing well. Mm. I guess the the one guy that maybe wasn't as good as we were expecting is Dimitar Savatinov, picked up a, a bit of an injury, injury in his hip. Left, yeah. Still managed to finish the competition, mm. but you could see he was hurting. I think by the end of the, the last event, the stones, I think he just did the one stone. Yeah, he walked over the like, yeah, one I'm done with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Masters are strong and, you know, I'm looking forward to giving it a crack next year. Oh man, next year it's going to be just twice as stressful. <laughs> I don't know how Who are you going to support, me or Rauno? Of course, you. <laughs> but Rauno, if you're watching, <laughs> you too. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to it. I, I mean, would just, uh, I, I, you know, I always support you. Of I course, support Rauno I know, too. Like, I know. We're never unhappy for a friend when they do well, are we? Absolutely. As long as you get through it unscathed and you're happy with your I'm performance. Just, I'm just looking forward to it because you know it's it's not too scary in terms of weights. Mm. Uh, the athletes are still really good. could be even better line up next year when yeah. potential other athletes might end up doing it someone like JF comes in yeah yeah let's not tell him about it no, anyway no moving on <laughs> so we move on to the open men and I genuinely all 10 of these guys in the final really impressed me I was so pleased to see so many great new athletes kind of coming up um None more so than maybe not such a new athlete, Spencer Rimmick taking the win. Spencer was second last year at OSG. Again, on the last stone rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and Spencer's obviously gone on to do a Giants Live, came yeah. over for the Royal Albert Hall. That's right, yeah. Performed, you know, we very solidly well, there. Yeah. The Giants Live show is obviously stacked. But rather than kind of resting on his laurels and thinking, oh, I've done a Giants Live now, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of... Worthy. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. He's decided I'm going to go back to OSG and prove his worth. One again, he's guaranteed himself another Giants Live competition. I absolutely admire that. And I kind of, I, I really suggest anyone that isn't a f regular World Strongest Man finalist, go to OSG or go to some comps and prove that you're still really, really good. Don't just sit around expecting an invite. Go and show yeah. people what you're capable of because there are so many good athletes right now. You saw it in this competition, 10 absolutely incredible guys in the final mm -hmm. and guys that have been to Worlds not making the final. I was going to say, amazing guys not in the final. Wesley Claiborne did not make the final and his is a name that's thrown into the hat by fans all the time. But unfortunately, I mean, it's hard because... If you're American or British, there's more invites to, for those sure. guys because there's one per episode, but there's so many good American and British guys. So it there really are. is hard to squeak your way into that top five. But what's great about the OSG competition is you can qualify from anywhere in the world. You go and do your online yeah. qualifier. And now we've got Jaco Schoonwinkel from South Africa, the great guy name. that came second. Yeah. He is going to be a great addition to a Giants Live co um, contest. You've got Matthew Rag from New Zealand. That guy was an absolute beast. Polish athlete, um, Oscar. Oscar Zakowski, another fantastic athlete, and a whole host of brilliant Americans that, yeah. you know, Tyler Obringer, he's going to be a beast in a few yeah. years. He's only been doing Strongman for six months, coming from powerlifting. He's got tremendous power, just needs to improve a little bit in terms yeah. of events. Tom Evans. Ah, oh, man, Tom Evans. Because Tom's his had name, an amazing year. Well, his name has almost become like synonymous with winning um, qualifiers he this year. He won the show. He won the Shaw Classic Novice Men's and he also won the Arnold's Amateurs. And I was like, yes, let's go for a hat trick, Tom. I know he would have wanted. He would have so felt the pressure, more. I guess, from winning those he as well. Probably did, but did you know what? I think this is good. I think everything happens for a reason. Next year, he's going to be at the Arnold's. He's going to be at the Shaw Classic. Those are some massive platforms to show what you're made of. So, yeah. and you know, maybe, maybe Giant's life will be too much as well. Let's not overwhelm him. Giant's life. Well, he's got. He's got a busy year coming up already. <laughs> he has. Yeah. But, but seriously, the the open class is fantastic it's so really good, good seeing these new athletes come through and i talk about it all the time we've got to see different regions progress do comps in different areas but osg is the competition that anyone can qualify mm -hmm. even if you don't have a regional competition you can upload your lifts online for the re for the um online qualifier online, yeah. and if you're good enough you get here you could be like the top three here that will be going to a giants live in 2023 could potentially be going to world's strongest man yeah so I feel like we've talked way too much. There's a lot of competitions going on. How can you do them justice, though? Just like a minute or two each. There's yeah. so many and good you athletes. Know, there's athletes that we didn't even mention that have done incredible one-off yeah. performances. I yeah. mean, Wesley Claybourne mentioned him. His sandbag was unbelievable. Yeah. There's been other athletes as well. The thing with this competition is you need that consistency you with 30 or 40, yeah. 50, some of them, uh, sometimes in your category. One bad event can cost you big That's time. Okay. But congratulations to every single athlete that made the top 10. 
to all our winners and world champions. You guys did amazing. And to the three athletes that will be going to Giants Live. We look forward to seeing you compete next year. Auntie Liz, did you enjoy OSG? I loved OSG. I Yeah, it was an emotional roller coaster for me. Like seeing it sort of slip away from Andrea right there on the stones. But also being happy for Olga. I felt, ah. then the same thing happened with Rauno. And I thought, my gentle heart can't take much more. And now you're going to do it next year too. And I won't be as stressed for you. You oh, know that. We'll you, know, you know, I'm not. No, as... do you know what? Actually, it might be easier because you can look after them yeah. out back and I can just film. I'm, I'm less emotional. <laughs> you are a lot less emotional. <laughs> but <laughs> cool. OSG. She was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed our coverage from it. We've got the Magnus for Magnuson Classic coming up next. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a day. <laughs> right, guys, take care. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.